Tongass National Forest is part of the world's largest temperate rainforest. No surprise then that it rains here a lot. Nor is it a surprise that some folks choose not to live in this climate. But those of us who do live here and work for the Forest Service have some remarkable professional opportunities in a land of damp but magnificent landscapes. Alaska has that lore and has that mystique. I've worked on uh, lots of places down south and every place I've worked has just been spectacular and unique. But the Tongass is by far my most favorite place. Alaska has just so much to offer. It's still wild. It's still just fascinating to me to come to a place like this that is untamed and untouched. What's exciting about working on the Tongass is the fact that you can take the good habitat and make it excellent. There's just a real, real ethic of um, conservation and land stewardship. I think it offers more diversity than any other national forest in the system. And not to mention, you get to live in Alaska. The Tongass National Forest covers southeast Alaska's Inside Passage. At 17 million acres, it's about the same combined size as the states of Maryland, Delaware, and Hawaii. 70,000 people live in some 30 communities surrounded by the Tongass. They range in size from small villages to towns of several thousand. The largest town is Juneau, the state capital, with 30,000 people. America's largest national forest offers unparalleled opportunities for people looking for jobs managing public lands on a grand scale. First of all, coming to the Tongass has got unparalleled wildlife, fish, uh, watershed characteristics. This is a place that is, is relatively intact, much more intact than any other place in the country. And just working on the vast landscape that we have that is, that is in this condition is, is extremely exciting and rewarding. We are a forest that a lot of people in the United States care very deeply about. And because of that, um, we are often in the limelight. I have spent uh, many hours back in Washington, D.C., talking to people who really care about the Tongass. A lot of places in the Forest Service you, you would go to, people in my position wouldn't have that opportunity. I think you would get more experience here quicker than you would anywhere else. When I was younger, I thought I was going to be a professional dancer, a professional ballet dancer, and uh, it didn't work out. <laughs> but through it all, I always had a, a love of geology as, as a hobby, and that did work out. <laughs> My position currently is something called a student career employment position, which means that the Forest Service pays for my training, they pay for my graduate education, and then when I graduate, I work for them for two years. We're here to talk to people about bear safety and make sure they have the information that they need to be safe here. And we're also, we do uh, wildlife monitoring sessions um, of the bears that are here and kind of people management and bear management. It's exciting to be a part of a, a long-term project and something that's, that is really involved in a management aspect of conservation. So the, the results that we're gonna get here will have a big impact for managing this forest, this ecosystem. I mean, it's just the variety of things that I get to do. Um, you know, one week I might be out with Jim mapping geology. Another week, I'm, you know, assisting on an archaeological excavation. The week after that, I'm exploring new caves that no one's ever been in before. And, uh, it's just going in Monday morning and not knowing where you're going to be Friday afternoon. That's uh, that's really exciting for me. I came from California mostly because I've always wanted to be in Alaska and work in Alaska, and I like kind of the Forest Service philosophy of land stewardship. I'm a soil scientist, so I do like to dig. So it's just a good time getting out and getting dirty in the woods. Uh, the purpose of the uh, Southeast Alaska Discovery Center is to educate people about the Tongass and about Alaska's public lands. Well, of course, being Alaska Native, I get the people that are interested in Native culture, all the staff send them to me. And uh, just the other day, I had a professor, and his wife was saying that he's an instructor. He said, no, right now I'm a student. So he was learning from me, and I was learning from him.
there's some cultural dimensions, uh, some cultural history that's, that's real today, that's a part of this uh, forest in terms of subsistence and the resources that they provide the native people, the indigenous people of this area, that to me can't be separated from uh, being a, a biologist or a scientist studying the biology here. Another challenge on the district is uh, timber management. Um, a long t uh, some time ago, there were large timber sale contracts for 50 years. After those were canceled, a lot of the industry went away, and the industry that remained, we hoped to be able to form a stable industry that could work at a lower level than in the past. Coming up with the timber for those mills has been challenging, not because the supply isn't out there, but for controversy over the Tongass. Some people really want it to stay the way it is because it's so wonderful and undeveloped. And on the other hand, that lack of development makes it hard to make a living. It is not just a timber forest. It has that piece, but it's got a lot more. Recreation is a growing industry in this southeast economy. Uh, these small islands, which at one time were entirely timber dependent, are diversifying their economies and are very interested in everything else the Tongass has to offer. It is one of the most challenging jobs I've ever done is trying to hire people for this position and trying to tell them about the conditions up here. You gotta paint the worst picture possible because you don't want someone to come up here, you know, and paint this rosy picture then have them spend a week in the rain. We don't have many roads in the Tongass that connect to other areas and you can't just jump in a car and uh, head off to visit grandparents or parents. Coming from outside, I mean, stateside would be obviously a culture shock. You know, I mean, we have, we're a small town of like six, eight hundred people. We've had people in the past come from like Louisiana and didn't know what they're coming to. But by the end of the summer, they had a good time. They really enjoyed doing that. There's lots of reasons to come to Southeast Alaska and the Tongass National Forest. It's a magnificent place. It's beautiful. It's full of wildlife and scenery and fishing. It's a great place to work. The temperatures and weather here year-round are fairly mild. It's a, it's a good place to live. Well, I spend the summer out here in Misty Fjords from May through late September. There are four rangers covering a wilderness area about the size of Connecticut. It's a great job. I love it. This is my third season here. This is my office. Whenever I meet people from the lower 48 who learn that I live and work in Alaska, most say, I've always dreamed of visiting Alaska, or I've always thought about applying for a job in Alaska. And many seem just a bit envious that I'm here while they haven't yet taken steps to make their dreams come true. For the Tongass National Forest, I'm Pete Griffin. <laughs>